Good afternoon, church. This is Pastor Larry Bimel from True Grace Church here in beautiful downtown Redlands. The Lord's been talking to me for the last couple days about a few things. He wanted me to do just a short bite for you today. Like always, you're welcome to leave comments <clears throat> or questions. And if they're questions, I will come back later and answer them to the best of my ability. This ties into the word I gave back uh, for 2000, um, what is God saying for 11, 11, 22, or 21, uh, which tied back into 2000, uh, 11, 11, 11, 11, and it had to do with pouring out fresh anointings, realigning anointings, redistributing anointings. Well, I was uh, praying in our our little prayer room that we have here last week and the Lord said stay connected to me and he was talking about this season he says that we're in a season stay connected to me um, there are going to be some shakings there are things that are happening there are, there's going to be continued some protests there is going to be some strife in the land there is going to be a lot of anger on those who want to continue to worship Baal and kill babies um, but the Lord really my prophetic words are always usually for the most part to the body of Christ the body of Christ there are other prophets out there who they can tell you what they're talking about in the White House or in wherever you know they're, they're hearing God in that area Mine usually goes for the for the body of Christ, and so he, he said, um, "Stay connected to me." And when he said that, he showed me a vision of the throne room, which I just saw the throne and I saw a river coming out of it. Well, that is a reference to um, Revelation twenty-two verse one. This is the Apostle John. He says, "And he." Jesus showed him a river of the water of life bright as crystal or clear as crystal coming from the throne of God and of the Lamb. The river of life, you know, um, hi guys, the river of life is the Holy Spirit. The Father makes the plan, uh, Jesus speaks it, the Holy Spirit is the one who brings the power. That's why when at Pentecost, Jesus said, wait for the Comforter, because he will endow you with power. So Christians, there's Christians who get saved, but then there's walking in the power. So he said, he showed me the, the river of life, and he said, stay connected to me. And then he showed me like a supply line, like a big pipe, you know, like, five six feet in diameter and all these Christians were going up and they were plugging these hoses into the pipe so that they could be supplied and when he said supply uh, to me it, it, it was what he was saying to me was my anointing my anointing breaks the yoke my anointing gives you the ability my anointing ties you in to my realm so you can hear me uh, work in my power, my wisdom, my understanding. Be led by the Spirit in all that you do. Um, there's going to be a shaking in the churches, and and we've seen some of we've seen some some major ministries where the pastors or the leadership has stepped away because of uh, improprieties or things that were hidden or things that they thought they could just get away with because of whatever, and. Um, in that there's going to be an exodus of people um, leaving denominational churches who are not teaching um, the fullness of who they are in Christ and this is what the Lord took, took me to to tell you guys I want to keep this short so he said stay plugged into me stay attached to me in this season and in Mark 16 17 this is Jesus he's going to ascend He's giving some final words to the 11 apostles. He says, those who believe in me and are baptized will be saved. Those who don't will be condemned. 
And then he goes on to say in uh, verse 17, these signs will accompany those who believe in my name. So he's saying those who are Christians and are believing in his name. And when you see the words believe in my name, that means I believe and I put faith in all of Christ's power, Jesus' power. Um, and he says these signs will follow those who believe in my name. They will cast out demons and they will speak with new tongues. So if we were just to do a quick survey and said how many churches or denominations believe in casting out demons, uh, it would we'd find out it's very few. Um, there's a lot of denominations who don't believe in praying in tongues. They think that that's uh, demonic or it's only if somebody gets up and speaks in tongues and then somebody gets up and translates. And so the one I want to tap into is casting out demons. Um, we started um, really accelerating in this about a year ago and the pushback I get from Christians is crazy. They want to argue about a Christian can't be possessed or what. And, Nowhere in the Bible does the word possess come up. It's oppressed. So when you see a Christian who is oppressed, there's strongholds, there's addictions, there's fear, there's anger, there's frustration, there's all kinds of things going on. That's a sure sign that there's a demonic stronghold. And you as a Christian believer can cast those off of your brothers and sisters or your leadership. Usually it'll be a leadership that will... Uh, uh, embrace this and the anointing will be on them and they can set them free and the other thing the Lord said to me is he says we're coming back in to the five-fold ministry and this is going to be the season or this is going to be the time of the Apostles and the prophets and you go you know if you a lot of denominations they say well there are no um, Apostles anymore they died with the original 12 well that is a denominational thinking to keep people under wraps, to keep people under control. In Ephesians 4, 11 through 13, the Apostle Paul, now this is chapter, this is Ephesians. Paul has probably now maybe 15, 20 years after his Damascus uh, encounter with Jesus, he's now saying, even then, so that's, you know, this is not the old apostles, these are new people. He said, Jesus gave some as apostles, some as prophets, some as evangelists, some as pastors, and some as teachers. Okay, so what we did was the church or the religion said we're going to get rid of the apostle and the prophet because they're the power. The apostle and the prophet are the power ones. They're the leadership of, of the church or the body of Christ. And so now we've made it a pastor-driven church. So now the pastor may be totally anointed and now he's trying to walk as the prophet and the, and the apostle over his church or his denomination so paul goes on to write he gives these five offices and they are in order there is a hierarchy and in verse 12 he says for the equipping of the saints those are people who are saved for the work of ministry so the apostle and the prophet and the evangel and the pastor and the teacher is to equip each one of us that we can then be a light that we can be the salt of the world that we can be an example to the world and says continuing on says for the work of the saints for the building up of the body of christ me and you until we all attain to the unity of the faith or trust and of the knowledge or understanding of son of the son of god to a mature man, to the measure of the stature, which belongs to the fullness of Christ. When we look at the body of Christ, how many people are truly walking in the fullness of Christ? I would say most Christians, not all, I don't, I don't want to do that, but I would say the lion's share of Christians are beat down, they're broken, they don't know who they are, they don't understand why bad stuff's happening. Um, they have no authority in their words. They're speaking all kinds of stuff. They're crying out to God, help me, help me, help it. And they don't understand who they are. They don't understand their authority. So the apostles and the prophets are coming on board now. They're really being exposed. They're really being lifted up to build the church up and say, look, when you got born again, everything that was negative, everything that was bad, everything that was separated you from God was crucified at the cross 
and was buried. Now you're a new creation in Christ, but now you still have the old flesh and you still have the old mind. The only thing that actually happened at, Cre at, at, at uh, the cross for you when you got born again was your spirit man is brand new. But your soul, your mind, and your emotions and your flesh are still unregenerated. And, and people don't understand that. They think when they got born again that uh, everything was perfect and now they just sing kumbaya and they don't do anything. Do you get sick as a Christian? Well, if you're a Christian and you're perfect, how could sickness live in the body of Christ? Well, because that body has not been rejuvenated yet. You haven't got your new body. And that is where the enemy attacks you. He attacks you in the flesh or your soul. So you see Christians who are attacked in their mind, their understanding, their physical bodies. And so we really need, I don't want to go on and do a whole big teaching here. But the Lord says, stay connected to me now more than ever. Stay connected to me. Find a church that's, that's preaching the gospel of grace. Find a church that embraces the fivefold ministry. Hey, Crystal, find a church that is, you're seeing miracles and works. When we started casting out demons off of, not possessed, but off of Christians, you know, one of the things we saw right away, there was healings happening all the time. We saw people got healed of diabetes. People, tumors, tumors were just disappearing. Uh, hernias were disappearing. Um, all kinds of things were disappearing. So right now, back to the original reason why I started this is the Lord is saying to his church, stay connected to me and also embrace the finished work of the cross. Everything that needs to be done that I have a relationship with the father has been hey rebecca how you doing kiddo has been done so i don't have to work anymore to be one with the father that's already done now what i do is i have to work to walk in the fullness of who christ has made me to be i need to walk according to his will if i'm still looking for the sin or uh, if i'm worthy or not I'm not going to ever push back the kingdom of darkness because I'm just trying to make it into heaven by the, by the skin of my, you know, my chin, you know, or the hair, you know, whatever you want to use, you know, and forget that you're in, you're part of the body of Christ. You, you can't lose it. You're sealing the, the sealed, the one says you've been sealed by the Holy Spirit. That means that part, the oneness with, hello, Mike. The oneness with the Father was all completed at the cross, but now we have to learn how to exercise and walk in the authority that Christ has given us. So, are you pushing back the kingdom of darkness, or are you still trying to figure out who you are? The Lord says, that's fine. Wherever you're at today, He loves you. He says, come on, let's go, kids. Um, there are things that are happening that are so amazing. Um, we just saw something happen this morning that uh, we had been hoping for for... 50 years and just like that it's done now it doesn't mean there'll be no more abortions it means it goes back to the state and there will be no more federal funded money coming from the federal government um, to pay for um, you know abortions and then here's another in insanity thing you're going to find out that our government has been sending money to foreign countries especially third world countries india pakistan uh, Africa, all over Africa, to set up abortion clinics to kill babies. Now, it's Baal worship. It's Baal worship. It's always been Baal worship. The devil has always tried to get people to sacrifice their babies. And so that part has all stopped. So now it's going to be down to the individual states. So you'll see really quick what states are what we call red or blue if you want to get into politics. And so that whole federal uh, abortion thing is done with. So the next thing you're going to start seeing is you're going to start seeing some government things. You're going to see some government people falling. Uh, there will be somebody reinstated to the White House, and I believe it's going to be this year. I think it's actually going to be before September. Um, but my words are always from the Lord for the body of Christ. It's time for us to be who Christ died to make us to be. Get some place where you get the truth. Get some place where they're building you up. Get some place where they're telling you how wonderful and how loved 
and amazing you are in the Lord and then start learning to use your authority you have so much authority and we're still running around saying Lord help me help me help me please 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 and the Lord says like he gave us an example Moses is standing at the Red Sea the children of Israel are pressed up against the water Pharaoh's coming it looks bad and they're crying out to the Lord what did the Lord say to Moses he said why are you crying to me lift up your staff the staff represents the cross lift up who you are in Christ and speak over your issues over your problems get with somebody who can help you is it a demonic issue is it a revelation issue um, is there something that needs to be done get with somebody who knows who they are with Christ who can help you to show you how to walk in that authority it's time for the church to step up and be who Jesus has made her to be amen if you have questions or comments you know go ahead and feel free to put them in the um, uh, in the comment section I'll get back to them uh, I was totally amazed at the teaching I did I hadn't looked at it that I did uh, back in November on this on 1111 and we put it up on YouTube and I think there's been like 6,000 views and so this is obviously a topic that people are interested in um, I pray this helped you a little bit but the Lord says stay connected to me and grow in the revelation of who you are amen have a blessed day guys I'll probably be doing short bites hopefully uh, more often as we go along because the Lord is speaking about some stuff and I want to teach you who you are in Christ so you can be everything he's called you to be. Amen. Have a blessed day, my friends.